Hi. I'm Alex. And I'm here to tell you all about the Surveys app. By the end of this short video, you'll be creating surveys like a pro, and finding out key insights from your students. First, what's the Surveys app used for? It's used to create highly engaging surveys, that can be sent to students. These surveys are completely customizable, and can have your university's branding and images. You can use a wide variety of question types, including choosing one item from a list, like at scale questions, free text boxes, questions with conditional logic and more. The app creates unique bit.ly codes which can be used in touch points and emails. It also creates QR and embed codes which can be used to put the survey on any of your web pages. The results can be collated and displayed as charts, graphs and tables. The replies can be viewed for an individual or group together to spot trends. This helps you analyze the data and aids your decision making. Who uses the app? It can be used by many different teams at your university, including your events team to get feedback on open days. This may be to find out how well the day went and so help you improve future events. Your inquiries team, to follow up on an inquiry resolution in order to help with your processes. Your recruitment team, to gauge a potential applicant's intentions. In this way you may be able to remove any roadblocks and smooth their path to applying. Your admissions team, to sound out thoughts or concerns of your students. I'm sure once you start using surveys, you'll think of many more ways it can be used. Let's dive into the app. On the screen you can see the CRM. We are in New Forest University, one of our demo universities. To enter the Surveys app, you just click on this icon. And here we are. This is the home screen for the Surveys app. At the top, it shows that we are in the domestic Surveys occurrence. You can have as many occurrences as you like, so you can have another one for international Surveys, postgraduate Surveys, inquiry Surveys, and so on. You may be asking, why you would need multiple occurrences? It's so that you can keep your surveys very organized by your various teams, and then restrict which teams can view which surveys and submissions. Now, moving on. In the Surveys tab we can see all our current surveys. We can filter them using these drop-downs or search using a name or keyword. Each survey has a unique ID and name. We can also see here how many times the survey has been completed, and which group it belongs to. There is a bit.ly link which can be sent to recipients in a touch point, so they can open and complete the survey. The table also shows the date that the survey will start being used from, and the date it will no longer be available. Finally, the status shows if the survey is in draft, or has been published. The three icons on the right are fairly standard. They allow us to clone, edit, or view the survey. The second tab is Respondents. This shows all the people who have completed surveys, how many they have completed, which ones, and when was the last time they completed one. From here, you can click to see more about the recipient or their answers. The next tab, In-App Reports, gives some insights into your surveys and submissions. If you have an idea for another report we could produce here, please contact our customer support team and we'll see what we can come up with. We'd love to hear your ideas. The final tab is Forms, which are crucial to the way that surveys are created. We'll come on to them in a minute. You may be wondering what these icons are. These are common to most pages of the CRM. They are a link to a tour of this app, a list of the other users who have access to this occurrence, and the settings of the app. In the settings, you can add, amend, or delete survey groups. As always, you need to be a super user to view the settings. Now we've looked at the basic tabs, it's time to create a survey. Surveys are made up of two parts. In the Surveys app, we have the survey name, settings, link, submissions, and stats. While in the Web Form Builder app, we have a form which lists all the questions we want to ask. Let's go back into the app, and start with the survey name and details. First, we click on this plus button. You can see that we are now on a familiar bus stop journey, helping us create the survey. 
In bus stop 1, we give our survey a name. And a useful description. We can also add it to a survey group. Then we save it. In bus stop 2, we choose how long the survey will be available for. I'm going to use mine for 5 years. By then I hope to be living on a super yacht in Dubai. If the survey is offline for any reason, we can leave a useful message here, giving our students some guidance. Bus stop 3 is where we choose the content. As I mentioned earlier, the survey questions are taken from a form which is created in the Web Form Builder app. We'll go to Web Form Builder now and build a simple survey form. The Web Form Builder app is one of our most powerful yet intuitive apps. You can create very complex forms with images and many different types of questions. We have a suite of training videos which explains all the bells and whistles. For now, I'm just going to get a simple form ready that we can use with our survey. To access Web Form Builder, we click on this icon. Here is a complete list of all our forms. To create a new form, you press the plus button here. Once again, we are on a bus stop journey. In bus stop 1, we give a name, a description, and any tags we like. We then save the form. In bus stop 2, we fill in these details. This form will be used as a survey and so we choose the surveys app. We also choose the correct occurrence. Remember? This is how we separate our domestic from our international surveys. This survey is only going to students so we'll keep this as the default. We can also choose to get a notification whenever the form is completed. For now I'm going to skip this as my inbox is pretty full already. Next you choose a consent pack that will be applied. Finally a tracking code, if you want. And then we save the form. In bus stop 3, we choose our questions. The questions you see on the screen are always preloaded when you create a new form. For my very simple form, I'm going to add one more question. What was the best part of the day? Obviously when you create your form, you can add many more in-depth questions, images, and so on. Bus stop 4 gives us the opportunity to choose a theme. But I'm happy with the default for now. In bus stop 5, we can preview our form. Short and sweet, just like me. Bus stop 6 shows the performance of the form. But, as it's just been created, there's not much to see there. Finally, we publish our form. OK, that was a whistle-stop tour through Web Form Builder. There are other training videos you can watch, which will take you through the steps more slowly. Now that we have our form, it's time to link it to our survey. So, back to the Surveys app. Here we are, back in surveys. And here is our survey we're working on. As you can see, it's still in draft. I click on the edit pencil and we're back in bus stop 1. I go to bus stop 3 and click this drop down. Here is the form I created to get feedback from pre-applicant open days. It has a unique ID so I can be certain it's the correct form. Having selected the form, I click save. Now the survey and the form are linked. 
Back in bus stop 1, I published the survey. Bus stop 4 shows me a preview. Lovely. From here, we can open the survey in a new tab. View the bit.ly link for sharing. And view the code for embedding on a website. Bus stop 5 is for performance, but as it's a very new survey, there are no stats here. Going back to the surveys tab, we can see our new survey is now in published status. There is the bit.ly link again, and the survey is all ready to be sent to our students in touch points. I've shown you the basic layout of the surveys app and how to create a survey. Now it's time to show you a real survey and its results. So, here's one I made earlier. Back in the surveys app, there's another open day feedback survey here. As you can see, we really went to town on this one. We have images, headings, and subheadings, neat boxes. Some radio button style questions. A free text box. And a consent pack. Remember, all of this was created in the Web Form Builder app. To see more about the survey responses, we click this button. Here we can see the survey name and ID. Also some information about the survey. And, most excitingly, we can see how many people have completed the survey. In this case 12. Below is a list of all the respondents. Each name is a hyperlink which takes you to their student record in the student database app. In that way, you can see if they have been in contact with you before, attended another open day, submitted an application and so on. On the right, we can see when the respondent completed the survey and how many questions they answered. Looks like everyone answered all the questions. Let's look at this respondent. We're still in the surveys app but on the left side we see a mini student card with some basic details for Donald Cartwright. On the right we see details of this survey submission. And if we click this, view answers link, we can see what Donald thought of our open day. So, some basic details about Donald. And the year of entry, level, and subject he wants to study. Then we have his ratings on various aspects of the day. Some fives which is good to see but also a couple of threes which maybe we need to work on for next time. Oh, and Donald would like some free coffee. Whatever next. Pedicures? While it's interesting to hear the views of one respondent, we can get a better picture if we see trends. To do this, we scroll up the screen to this drop-down and choose View Results, Charts. This allows us to view a pie chart for each question. For example, we can see where everyone first heard about our university. What people thought of our facilities. Or, what's important when choosing a university. For each of these pie charts, you have the option to download or print the chart. You can also download the answers as a CSV file using the three button menu. If you want to download all the answers, use the drop down menu to select view submissions, data, and then click on the three button menu again. Then you can take the data off platform. By now you're probably keen to get on with creating your first survey. Or maybe dying for the loo. Either way, here are just a few final points to bear in mind. Surveys are made up of two parts. In the Surveys app we have the name, description, settings, stats, and, eventually, all the respondents and their answers. In Web Form Builder we have the form which contains the questions we want to ask. You can create a survey by cloning an existing one or starting from scratch. The form can be as elaborate or simple as you want. Remember, 
the greater the number of questions, the less likely the student is to complete the survey. Both the survey and the form need to be live or published for the survey to work. So, check these first if you have a problem. The bit.ly link is how you get a survey into a touchpoint or email. The embed code is how you get it onto a web page. When you start receiving responses, you can view an individual's answers, and from there, jump to their student record. This allows you to see the background on an individual student and get a better understanding of them. Pie charts can be produced to spot trends from all your respondents. All the data can be downloaded as a CSV file for further analysis. And that's it. But before you rush off and create your first masterpiece, please click on the link below or scan the QR code and take our quiz. Hopefully, it'll help to reinforce what you've been watching. Thanks for your time and see you again soon.